So I was going to start my presentation by revealing a secret to you, but my colleague already gave it away. You are not alone. Not only are you not alone in this room, you are also not alone in your own body. In fact, you are a minority in your own body. More than half of the cells in your body are actually not human cells, but bacterial cells. But don't worry, most of those bacterial cells are good for you. And our immune cells are doing an amazing job in keeping those bacterial cells at places where they are not harmful for us. How do our immune cells do this, you will ask. So let me start by telling you that most of our immune cells, all our immune cells, are produced in the bone marrow from where they enter the blood. Unfortunately, I can't talk about all immune cells now, but I can talk about the most abundant one, which happens to be the one that I work with, the neutrophil. We all produce 100 billion neutrophils per day, which is a big number and necessary because neutrophils are really the first line of defense and have only a very short lifespan. Therefore, they need to be constantly produced. So how do neutrophils fight bacteria? Neutrophils have three superpowers. And I will demonstrate those superpowers with some model system. So this is not our oven glove. This is a neutrophil. And this is not a dirty old sock. This is a bacterium. Model systems in biology are not always perfect. This you come quickly to realize. Um, the first superpower is called phagocytosis and basically describes the process by which a neutrophil eats up a bacterium, killing it in the process, bacterium down. The second superpower that neutrophils have is a process that we call degranulation. And basically, it consists of spraying bacteria in your environment with toxic molecules, bacteria down. The, second, the third superpower that neutrophils have is called netosis. Netosis describes a process that we mostly work on in our lab. It describes a process by which a neutrophil explodes, <laughs> so this is an explosion, <laughs> relieves a net, a sticky net with toxic molecules that kind of engulfs and traps bacteria so that they're immobilized and die in the process. Bacterium down, also neutrophils go down. I investigate where the energy for this process comes from. Neutrophils, as many other cells, need glucose for this process. Uh, they use glucose as a sugar. They use this sugar in a very clever way that allows them to use the sugar molecule several times. Um, we, I work with, there are patients that cannot do this recycling mechanism for the sugar molecule. Those patients, in some cases, have elevated levels of infection. I investigate whether those elevated levels of infection are linked to this genetic deficiency and the defect in performing these neutrophil explosions. Thank you very much.